as we come back, let us remind you that at the Post Live, Serling on Saratoga is coming to you live from the Party Glass Pub in downtown Saratoga and is presented by Naira and Partners, the Brave Will Foundation, giving families hope, www.bravewill.org, and the Belmont Child Care Association. Eddie Olchek is kind enough to be with us tonight. He's staying with us. Eddie, how many hockey games do you broadcast a year? <laughs> Uh, there's probably a pretty good chance I do uh, probably a little north of 110 games every year. How do you do that? Do the playoffs, you just, like the you playoffs just do it like most horse racing people. You just get up, the alarm goes off, you just, okay, where am I, where do I need to be, and uh, and go from there. But I'm, I'm a lucky guy. I played a long year and a uh, long time in the NHL, and I just you know got an opportunity to, uh, to get into uh, the game on the broadcast side, and uh, it's just it's a lot of fun and every game is different. You know, I mean, I miss the part of being a part of a you know, of the of the winning and fixing the losing and all that kind of stuff. But uh, we were we have a great team. I do games in Chicago for the Blackhawks locally, and then I do all the games uh, nationally on NBC. I work with Hockey Hall of Famer and Doc Emmerich each and every night and sit next to him and do the games. And uh, again, another uh, another place where they pay me to go watch hockey games and talk about it. And, and during the playoffs for NBC, you're traveling almost every day. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, you probably do f for sure five games a week. And then as the season, uh, as the playoffs get on, Andy, it's a lot easier because then there's less teams. Sure. And then you're just going every Same other players. day. And, and, uh, and usually there's more time to uh, to play the horses on those off days. <laughs> right. That's good. You hate to have Something that you know, fear with your horse. Well, all right. I mean, hockey does get in the way of horses. I've said that publicly. I'm not afraid to say that. Is that, yeah, sometimes it does. But. Now it's amazing now with, uh, with TVs on airplanes and Internet on airplanes. I'm not very good on that, that World Wide Web thing, but uh, when it comes to uh, getting my feet wet, yeah, it, it passes the time for sure. Yeah, I was on a plane watching um, TVG on the way home from California yeah. one day, and the guy next to me kept hitting it during the thing. I kept thinking, I'm going to be watching a race in the stretch, and the guy's going to change the channel. And it's, yeah. it, he was a lot, not, not surprisingly, a lot bigger than me. It would have been ugly. So NBC, came, when did NBC contact you about racing? I mean, that yeah. must have been like a dream come true yeah. for you. Well, people people don't realize this is that when I, mean, I go back to I mean, it kind of goes all for full circles. Back in '94, after we won the Stanley Cup, there was a work stoppage in the NHL, and the people over at the Meadowlands Racetrack, uh, Bruce Garland and Jimmy Gagliano, uh, I mean, they were big big Ranger fans, and they said, "Hey, you know, you're not working. The league won't let you play. Why don't you come to the Meadowlands, the Flats, and why don't you work on the TV side? You can work with Barbara Foster, and you can." Ken Workington, you can you know do the analysis of the races, and I'm like, wow, if somebody wants to pay me to go to the racetrack, talk about the horses, it's a win-win. So I worked there for almost three months. That was my introduction to I television. That, yeah. And then I went back to playing, and, and the rest is history. But the, the NBC thing, for probably at least, I mean, I've been at NBC now nine years. Probably for the last five, I've, I've gone to my boss, Sam Flood, at, at NBC, and just said, you know, hey, if there's any opportunities for the horse racing, you know, I mean, I'd love to do it, love to do it. And finally, I just put all my cards on the table. My, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. I just said, look, I don't know if you realize this, but I got my start in television uh, at the racetrack. And he didn't know that. And, you know, he did some thinking, obviously. And then he gave me a chance to do a couple of races out in California. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. I mean, we have a great team there. I mean, it's, you know, I'm still trying to, to, to find my way in, in my role uh, but it's the people there are just outstanding, and uh, it's been a. I think what it's done, Andy, for me, I think it's energized me in a lot of different ways, uh, and I think it's helped my hockey broadcast too uh, by doing the horse racing because it's a little bit different. Sure. And uh, but it's it's great to be a part of, and uh, and I thank the people at NBC for allowing me. We have a great crew, great tremendous, producers. Tremendous yeah, and it's you know it's it's a lot of fun to be a part of, and and hopefully when I'm doing it, people can feel the passion that I have for the game. Uh, because uh, that's that's who I am, and that's what I love to try to teach and and to sell the game. Because I think horse racing has a lot to sell, not only to you know uh, the rabid uh, fans, uh, but also the people that maybe you know might be a little intimidated by it as well. And so you've been involved, obviously, with all the Triple Crown races. Yeah, yeah. Have you, like me, been sort of amazed by the American Pharaoh phenomenon? I, I've been amazed. It's by it. it's been really uh, it's been incredible uh, to see everything. Uh, to see everything happen and to see how he has been able to 
captivate and how he is how he is one and and uh, you know the ownership the, the Zayat family and obviously with with uh, with Bob Bafford Victor Espinosa I mean I heard he's going to be on Dancing with the Stars now I mean you know I mean that's you know I mean that's that's great I mean it's great for no, I, 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 I it is, you know I mean I think it's it's great because then people you know yeah and and people will sure. will will see him and and uh and be able to relate and, and maybe get a few fans over. And, I mean, it's all about cross-promoting. I mean, that's what we try to do at NBC is that when when there's hockey games, I try to get in horse racing references as much as I can. And when I do the horse racing, there's nothing wrong with selling a little bit of, uh, you know, pucks and ponies every once in a while. And uh, But I, I just think that it's been incredible for the sport, and people are really excited. And, you know, uh, to have him here this weekend is, is going to be uh, – I mean, it's just going to captivate an incredible summer for sure. No, I agree. Now, have you had any chance to look? I don't know how many races you're covering, but you'll probably be three. We have three. Yeah, we have the forego, the sword dancer, and then obviously the big race. So, uh, the forego is the is the toughest. Yeah. What? what, Do you have any ideas in there? I mean, I I mean, private zone to me. I mean, you know, obviously I have a relationship with the ownership group there, and obviously it's a great story with 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 Renee Renee Douglas Douglas, and everything, but. Um, I'm looking to a horse on the outside falling sky. I, I think that this horse is – I don't think there's as much speed in this race. There isn't much speed right. there, but, yeah. which helps drive his own. Yeah, for sure, without a doubt. But I think that falling sky is the type of a horse that is on the outside, last one in, probably second you know, second to the lead because you know, nobody's going to be quicker than private zone. Uh, but I think it could be one of those where maybe it's a merry-go-round. And I, I don't think that falling sky can beat private zone if it goes that way. But I would imagine falling sky is probably going to be – well, he'll be 15, a big 15 to 18 to 1. I mean, that, that's what I'm kind of banking on. I don't know if I would pick him on top, uh, but I think that might be a horse that, you know, that I'm going to use uh, in that particular race. I think the Big Beast was hurt by his draw. Because okay. The Big Beast drew inside sure. a private zone. Right. The Big Beast is a Big Beast, yeah. obviously, and he's a horse that needs to run outside in the clear. Mm-hmm. And John Velasquez's job is to find a way to get him outside in the clear. And right. because there isn't that much speed, I wonder how much separation there will be. And yeah. I wonder how easy it's going to be for Johnny to get him to the outside. And I think the Big Beast could beat private zone, okay. but I think drawing inside of him has hurt him that a did, lot. Do you think there. the, the, the seven eights is? is oh, I think the seven eights is perfect okay. for him. Yeah, okay. I think it's perfect for him. The horse that I think is a little interesting is a Tamar Cruz. Yeah, Crew, right, right. The, the horse from Dubai originally yeah. that ran a fourth in the Met Mile. I don't think he ran that badly in the Met, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering if he's had a little more time. And Kieran's had such a good meet that maybe he Great has meet. a shot yeah. as an upsetter in that race. Yeah, again, I mean, I think it all comes down to trip and how quick they go. The, the one thing I will say about private zone. Uh, his work seven, well, six to five days ago. The 45 and change? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be tough. Yeah, I mean, but I, I don't, I think it might, you know, did he leave some of it on the track in the morning? Now, he's, I mean, he's going to have it. I don't say he's going to have it his own way, but I think he's going to be very comfortable being there. And Marty Pedroza knows him extremely well. Like, that was the only thing that I would say. And I haven't talked to Dennis Savard, who's part owner, and, and uh, Judge Cachado, who I know extremely well. I haven't talked to him about the work. But I would be, just looking at it on the form, Andy, I would just say, well, you know, did he, did he leave a little bit of that uh, in the morning. He's an amazing horse. It just yeah. seems like he shows up and runs well every time. He's going to be tough. I also think that Saludos Amigos is far from okay. impossible because he drew outside and I thought he was compromised by being inside. If you look at the King's Bishop, the, the Naira.com King's mm-hmm. Bishop, have you looked at that at all? I have not. King's Bishop's a very, very interesting race because yeah. you, you're going to play the pick four, the pick six. Oh, the, yeah, yeah every, there's, there's, already, a, we, there's a lot of good action. You'll probably I, see I, the I, marker I on my hand already. I've already, uh, my, my hotel. How, right. how do you deal with that, by the way, when you're on the air? Because I've had this problem too and you want to make a bet yeah it's kind of a problem right Nah, there's you know there's always a solution for a problem there's always (laughs) smartphones for for getting your i've been married 27 years yes sir to the same woman who brags about being married to more than one time to a couple different women 27 years yes somebody else here is is, is doing that (laughs) hey i can't uh, thank you enough for thank you very much hey i always watch you and jay and and maggie from the computer you guys do a great job i always try to uh, to uh, to listen and to pick up things i think you guys just do uh, just a masterful job uh, when i get a chance to watch you so keep up the great work and thanks everybody for coming out here tonight thank you hey, thanks for having me thanks so thanks. much eddie thanks for staying with us stay with us we come right back at the post live is brought to you by naira wager on naira.com naira's new state-of-the-art wagering interface